is dead. Take your best, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to start with Jill. Now, Jill seems to have a very strong hold on Jill. I mean, on Joe here. I, just I, hope, Jill, I hope Jill has a strong hold on Jill because Joe definitely doesn't have a strong hold on Joe. Yeah, she's already, dude, she's, she's, she's on the cover of Vogue. She's eating it up. She does not want to lose this. Because she still has a functioning brain, somewhat. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, nope. this is the shit. This is the, this is the <laughs> these are the kind of covers that. This is what this is what Joe's getting. Um, His faces during the debate were incredible. Oh my god! Just, it's like, have you ever seen that skit? Have you guys ever seen that skit that Bill Burr does about like? How the old met, how old people had that like frightened like old man face, or it's like he is the perfect. I might actually cut that together. I'm gonna cut that together. I'm gonna take Bill Burr's skit and I'm gonna cut it with with just Biden Biden moments from the debate. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So, is it Jill that's running the country? Is she making? Is she making all these executive decisions and holding in all, all all the official meetings and stuff? I mean, she's not always like at all the all the meetings, but uh, let's see. I think, I think I um, think I think Jill is the one Biden listens to. I think the reason why Biden's holding on is his own narcissism. Which has been apparent for his entire miserable fucking career. But the thing is, like, you know, this guy's this guy's been a fucking joke. He's been dunked on and shit on and called out for his pathological lying and all this other bullshit for so goddamn long that he's like, no, this is this has to end in a happy ending for me. I can't go out as a disgrace. I can't end my miserable life. The same way that I've lived all of it. It's all ego with him. And, you know, even if your brain is soup and you have dementia, guys, I'm begging everybody, do not feel bad for this fucking wretched old ghoul. No okay? one should feel bad. He was always a no shitty one. person. This is the guy that talked about not wanting his son to grow up in a racial jungle. Like he's. I was going to bring that out, yeah. He's an, ab- he's an absolute fucking toilet he is a walking toilet it just now the toilet doesn't flush properly that's the only thing now it doesn't a flush. literal walking broken toilet he's a broken toilet <laughs> he's a walking broken toilet i've never okay normally okay this is no one second uh sorry guys Crab's having a he's having he's having a Biden moment. He just finally beat Medicare. He finally beat Medicare. I had a Bluetooth moment. My Bluetooth like just disconnected and connected again for some reason. However, Shit, uh, why didn't the why didn't the White House go with that? Biden had a Bluetooth moment. That would have been perfect. <laughs> a Bluetooth moment. <laughs> he had said, a Bluetooth well, it's fake. It's, apparently it's it's cheap fakes, I, I think. Well, so, it's, it's it's cheap real right now. So that's the thing. Like I wouldn't normally be um, cover. Like you know, I don't consider this stuff like necessarily important. Um, in in a lot of ways, but this is such a historical spectacle to be seen because I've never seen anything like this. I don't know if you know of anything like this that happened. I saw bad cookies brought up. Um, that this has happened before. This is not the first time. Um, Which I believe it happened with Ronald Reagan, but there was like oh yeah, <laughs> his brain was not yeah. His brain was not. He was not like having daily to day like this man. You know, we had a, we had we have a president that's like going off like he's coming out with like 10, 20 clips a day. And here's the thing. Here's the thing. 
there was a problem where the candidate for president whose brain was eaten by a worm is not the first choice you pick. Okay, when you think like which of these people had their brain eaten by a worm that then subsequently died, you choose him. You wouldn't even choose RFK. This guy is just... I'm also begging people. I'm begging people. Like, can we just not elect fossil humans who are out of touch because they've been, like, entrenched in the system for 40 years and they haven't had to buy their own gas in, like, three decades, maybe? Just kind of maybe someone with a finger on the pulse a little bit. I'm, I want to clip. I want to. I want to clip this into the um, the Kim Iverson thing because, dude, you, you're talking of RFK Jr. This is what he just said on Breaking Points this past the two days ago. I've said this from the beginning. I am not a church boy. I am not running like that. I said in my. I had a very very rambunctious youth. I said in my announcement speech that I have, a, I have, if I have so many skeletons in my closet that if that if they could all vote, I could run for king of the world. You're talking there about the nanny situation. I mean, I, I, I do have to ask, sir. I mean, are you denying it or not? I'm not going to comment on it. All right. Well, I gave you the opportunity, and <laughs> that's crazy. That's like an insane answer. That's an insane answer. That's your independent choice. And that's what like some people are feeling for right now. That's insane. That's pretty crazy to me. Um, that that man has brain worms just probably, I don't know how many brain worms he has, but um, you know, he's got, he's got his own dish of problems. I mean, you know, let's get, Let's get back to Oh fuck. Sorry. I didn't you pulled a fast you. one. You, <laughs> <didn't mean> <laughs> you exposed my extremely white dancing. God damn. <laughs> now I'm done. I'm cooked. It's Jover. <laughs> It's so Jover. It's so Jover. <laughs> what were you going to say before I cut you off? I already forgot. Okay. <laughs> Fuck. Shit. Sorry. I was going to say we finally beat... <laughs> we finally beat Medicare. That's the, that's going down forever. So, so here's, a, here's a second possibility. Maybe it's Jill. Maybe it could be... Contestant number two, Hunter Biden. Joe's crackhead son is probably running the country right now. Breaking news. We're now learning that Hunter Biden is attending some of the president's meetings at the White House, staying close to his father post-debate. NBC's Monica Alba is reporting from Washington, D.C. What more can you tell us, Monica? Oh, we perfect. Need details we coming in to this. our team, Chris, along with my colleagues, Kristen Welker, Mike Memley, and Sarah Fitzpatrick. We have learned from sources familiar with the situation at the White House that Hunter Biden has been by his father's side ever since they were at Camp David this weekend as a family, where they had some discussions about the president's potential path forward here and his reelection campaign. And that since he returned from Camp David last evening with his Father. We understand that Hunter Biden has even joined some meetings and conversations that have taken place between the president and some of his most senior advisors and senior staff. And while we should note that it's not unusual for Hunter Biden to be at the White House, to be in the residence, to be attending certain White House events, which we have certainly seen time and time again over the last three and a half years, where we have seen photos of him and where he has appeared in public, it is unusual unusual, according to the people we spoke with, for him to be participating at 
this level and to have the sort of regularity of some of these contacts and conversations with senior staff. We understand, again, since returning yesterday from Camp David, where they were more huddled as a family, to now as the president has resumed some of his more traditional meetings at the White House with those key advisors. That's kind of nutty, dude. We have a I mean, I, this is awesome. I love this. I love this for America. You know, that's definitely what we need. We need a a insane crackhead pulling pulling the strings. That's good. Real good. Good shit. This is stress. This shit's stressful, man. He's got the keys to the Fed right now. Hunter Biden, we have a crackhead in the, key, the keys of the Fed. That's pretty bad. We got a crackhead loose in the White the House. Swift end. The risk of this mission and the risk of all this mission. What do you think he's thinking right now? What do you think he's on he's probably, probably thinking I want some crack. Or, <laughs> or shit, did I, is that hooker still breathing behind the trailer? <laughs> she might be still breathing. What, what I, it, it, a, a curious, you just think he, he's got wide eyes, wide eyes. He's probably thinking, I really hope my dad dies somewhere privately and not on this stage right now. Yeah. Like, Most likely. All this mission could bring the war to a swift end. The risk of this mission and the risk of all this mission. We're enormous. That could be a potential president right now. We don't know who's actually running the country. We don't actually know. That's that's, yeah. that's the whole point. So and that's the biggest that's the biggest crackhead mm-hmm. another contestant. In the running. Why don't they wait? Why don't they just make him run? Wait. <clears throat> why don't they pull Hunter Biden and Trump? Is it because he's a felon? Um, no, no. It's not just because he's a felon. Okay, because <laughs> because the chuds, the other the other wing on this giant billionaire uh, fueled bird would have a fucking field day with that. Can you imagine him debating Trump and Trump just bringing up all the crack videos and the laptop and the the deals with Ukraine? Like it just it would be so over so quick. There's just so much fucking dirt. You need someone who's like. <clears throat> so the way these like kind of pro wrestling, pretty much bullshit elections work is you got to run someone who's a complete kind of stark contrast to the last person that the, the, the masses are upset with. So you kind of saw that with Obama, right? Obama was like very well-spoken, very articulate, but let a lot of people down. He fucked over a whole country. He bombed the shit in the Middle East. He did a, he did a lot of shitty stuff. So then in comes Trump, who's the exact opposite. He's, he's boisterous. He's fucking off his rocker he he, he's like he's not even good at lying he's narcissistic as hell and then from trump you get biden who again is now like he's your lovable grandpa or at least the image that they crafted when they mk altered his brain and shit so now they got to find like a, a contrast to the to the like diminishing you know soup brain sort of shit going on and someone who already seems like they're a little off the rocker wouldn't be the ideal choice. Uh, they gotta, they gotta pick someone sharp, clean as a whistle. Not her. <laughs> where, where we got a third, we got a third one in the running, and. Kamala Harris. Is she actually learning? Some people are asking for a hander. 
Harris Sanders ticket. A Handers ticket. I like that. A Handers ticket. <laughs> a Handers ticket. A Handers ticket. A handy ticket, if you will. Ooh, that was bad. Yeah. Um, oh. Do you think you could even bring all the Bernie bros back? Because realistically, I know a lot of revolutionary, like, far left I was, people I, like – the, I, there was K High is coming back, is you know they're thriving a little bit now. Um, they're trying to make Kamala a thing again. And it's just really, it is like the sixth time, and they can't do it. You know I why? Think they're just she would lose I, against Trump. She would lose against Trump really bad. Yeah, because like nobody. Okay, <clears throat> here's like the problem. Here's the problem with Kamala Harris. Okay, she's done nothing. The only thing that anyone knows about Kamala Harris is that she has fucking bees in her head. That's it. She has no personality outside of saying, like, the most weird, nebulous bullshit imaginable to the point where you – like, they can't run her because she's just kind of an extension of Biden insofar as she's going to do the same weird, like, what the fuck is this person talking about shit whenever they speak? It's 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 such a bad call. Imagine her debating Trump. He like jabs at her for some of the shit they did during the administration. She goes on this weird platitude about like, I don't know, making jambalaya or how like she likes she likes playing Jenga like at night with a couple of Xanax. I don't know what would happen, but it wouldn't be good. Oh, shit. Here's Cuomo. No, uh, well, it's, it's some, more of what Megan is the in chief and fam- uh, Very good. Let me let you start. The governors come out and say, we're good with Joe. Why isn't that the end of the conversation? He's Thanks for having me, Chris. Just want to correct something from your very interesting, excellent monologue in many ways. Uh, I'm not a Democrat, right? I'm a progressive. I'm of the left. Uh, I'm not a member of the Democratic Party. I'm not approaching this as a Democrat. Well, I am actually as a small D Democrat. The reason I have a small a D in this game, why I this care. This guy about- just called himself a small D Democrat. I'm a small D, bro. If you just made that shit up, never try riffing on air again. I'm a small D Democrat. <laughs> I care about the future of American democracy. As you say, we're about to celebrate the 4th of July, independence, American history. I believe all of that is at stake come November. And the only thing I care about is stopping the proto-fascist candidates that the GOP are putting up once again. And when I look at the polls, when I look at the debate last week, when I look at the numbers, it just is very clear that Joe Biden is in a very bad place, as you laid out in the introduction. Uh, no president has ever been this unpopular at this stage in the cycle, so close to election. Day. Thursday night was a car crash of a debate. That's when I came out and said he should step aside. I've never said that before. I said it Thursday night because it was just ridiculous what we saw on Thursday night. And because I see no way back for Joe Biden. One thing I've been waiting for for the last few days is for a plan. What is the plan that Joe Biden has to recover uh, all the voters he's losing by the day? Uh, He's down six points in the New York Times poll today among likely voters, nine points. Uh, among eight points, excuse me, amongst registered voters. In fact, the most crucial stat, Chris, in that poll is that the number of Republican voters who want Biden to stay on as the nominee has gone up, not down, since last week, because the Republicans know he's eminently beatable. So I want to hear what the plan is. I don't think there's a plan. They briefed to Axios, Team Biden, he's going to give a great convention speech. We may get an interest rate cut, and that's going to deliver victory. That's BS. They're in a very bad place. If they switch now to Kamala Harris, they have some chance of recovering ground, having a younger, more effective prosecutor of the case, someone who can maybe turn the page on Gaza and someone who could actually rhetorically beat up Trump at the next debate if there is another debate. This, this man thinks that Kamala is going to switch on Gaza like that. <laughs> like she's going to stop bombing kids. Like she just like so, so she, she just starts to feel bad now that she's president. Now that you that was the presidency. This is bro, like, that's what that's the shit that's going on. Bro, the worst part of that debate by far was you had two candidates who basically were slap fighting each other over who's fucking hornier for Israel. It was the worst. It was the worst. Meanwhile, we're all watching this horror unfold in front of our eyes. It was literally like a horror show. 
It was one of them. Was, was like Zion Don literally is just like they should finish the job. I'm sorry, guys, if you don't know what that means, um, it means literally finish the job. <laughs> he's he's talking like final solution shit. That's what that was. And she's gonna switch on this issue. Fuck no, she's not. These guys are just good at cosplaying concern while doing the exact same thing. Yeah, the, yeah. the conservatives do. That's all liberals do. Concern. That, I like that. that yeah. That's all the liberals do in North America mm. and in Europe as yeah. well. They just pretend that, like, oh my god, I care about these people while while actively contributing to the problem. That's that's always been their fucking their fucking grift. So here's the thing. I mean, we've had um, apparently th- this Tucker Carlson tweet says that um, <laughs> he says from an unusually good source, Obama's tweet supporting Joe Biden was disingenuous, which is what he I believe is referring to. Um, this right here. I kept that didn't, the debate nights happen. Trust me, I know. But Tucker Carlson is saying that Obama is telling me telling people that Biden can't win. Um, that Jill is the driving force. Oh, see, I got some Whitmer. So here's okay. I, I was I was reading that somewhere behind the scenes, Kamala's pissed that she's not the first choice. Okay. Oh, we got Kitty, Kitty Cam. Yeah, just made her say hi. But she's antsy. So let's get on. Let's get on to our next contestant. Maybe it's Chat GPT. <laughs> it could be Chat GPT. Here's an opinion piece. It's time for Biden campaign to embrace AI. To be <laughs> fair, walking. to be fair, AI is about the glitchiest. The closest thing to as glitchy as Biden is definitely our AI shit that's going on right now. We could I, no. I think AI would be. I think AI would do a better job. Well, yeah, my cat would do a better job. I, 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 a dead raccoon would do a better job. A, a, a box of bare assholes deep fried would do a better job. Like, all right. Well, just picture it. Just, just imagine. An AI-generated robocall of President Biden's voice has made the president sound absolutely fucking based. Let's listen. <laughs> Hello, Justin. It's me, Joe Biden. Look, here's the fact. Capitalism has outlived its usefulness. Socialism is the future. Now, I'm not talking about your grandpa's Marxist Soviet Union malarkey. I'm talking about good old American, red, white, and blue collar socialism. We're putting workers in the driver's seat. We're dissolving the corporate billionaire ownership of all industries. And every workplace in America will be worker owned and operated. We're giving Tesla to its workers. We're giving Disney to its workers. We're giving Amazon to its workers. Because workers know best. Workers innovate, not billionaires. Oh yeah, and for all you slimy billionaires out there, guess what? Have fun scrubbing the toilets. Let's get this country back on track. God love you, Justin. You're very cool and handsome. Amen. Fucking based. <laughs> I love the end there. Fucking based. Where, 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 yeah, I know. Where, where <coughs> really, I mean, maybe a chat An AI GPT. Generated- maybe a chat GPT present wouldn't be so bad. If you really try to imagine it. Um, okay, so <clears throat> my longstanding flaw I have in power structures is that I don't, I don't necessarily think that, um, I don't think humans were programmed to run like 
to, to have control over like a million people or like two million people. I think it kind of breaks your brain. I don't think human beings were just meant to do that. So with technology, I feel like a modern day dictatorship of the proletariat might just look like administrators and us levying the best technology we can to, inf- to enforce the will of the proletariat, the will of the people, the working class. And, um, you know, AI might be able to help us do that because, you know, you can, you can, you can weigh in on anything on your phone in five seconds. Why do we have representatives anymore? What's the fucking point? We don't need them. You needed them back in the day where you had to have elect a guy to go like speak for you at a location of a group of like different representatives. That was a solution to a problem that technology ideally could just solve now. Um, it's all it's all just swapping characters. I, I, I think it kind of puts it pretty well here. And perhaps yeah. It is not about the personality of the leader. It is about the elite's mindset. If the idea of domination at any cost, based also on forceful actions, dominates the American society, nothing will change. It will only get worse. But if, in the end, one comes to the awareness that the world has been changing due to the objective circumstances, and that one should be able to adapt to them in time, using the advantages that the U.S. still has today, then perhaps something may change. It is not about the personality of the leader, it is about the elite's mindset. Which is why, again, and I, I'm going to keep making this point. What's up, Nick? I'm going to keep making this point. I'm not going to stop making this point. Putin's spot on. It doesn't matter who you have in charge. So, no, I mean, whether, I, th- I just want to, I just want to point out the, the, the amount, the, like what we have compared to other countries, like what's actually. I don't see any other country that's like this. I don't genuinely don't see any like as as genuinely foolish as like this. Maybe said maybe the UK a little bit, but yeah, that you you guys take your guesses. Chat GPT. I mean, out of that, out of that like, group of people, out of out of everyone, out of everyone, whether it's Biden or Trump, the biggest loser is you. At the end it is. That. Because, as we say here, you don't really live in a fucking democracy. If if a if a malfunctioning corpse is your supposed leader, then you don't uh, you don't live in a democracy. You just don't. Um, you never like, really had one like in the past like couple decades, really. Well, that's that's the thing. That's Jimmy Dore. Jimmy Dore kind of puts it well. He he, he says that there's like a clip circulating from him that um, talks about like habeas corpus. Um, how Obama would repeal a, 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 like a, this like law from habeas corpus was like, like in the Magna Carta. So like we're operating from like a liberty view of like a, the 1100s. They, they like, and especially with the Supreme Court, like presidential immunity law, like we're, it's, it couldn't be more obvious that the oligarchy is here, but I mean, people, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> well, that's kind of why, that's kind of why even with this third party shit, I'm kind of just like, what are we doing here? Because the people supposedly elected Biden to run the country, but his brain is, his system 32 was deleted years ago. And the country's still making decisions. Someone's running the country. Someone's getting all this shit done. And it's not someone who was elected. So what are we doing here? What are we doing with this electoralism shit? What are we doing with this, like, maybe a third party will come in and me, 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 me. What's preventing them? If, If clearly there are other forces guiding the decisions of the nation behind the scenes, What does it matter what face is up there? Because it's just a fucking face. 
Do you guys want Jill Stein to win so she can break your heart when she just starts magically doing all the shit that you expected Obama to change in like 2008 and nothing else happened? Everybody should have learned their lesson with Obama. I should have learned my lesson with Trudeau. Um, it's going to be the same shit. There's no path to change under electoralism because the system is designed. The system is designed to uh, to essentially prevent, like, prevent any. Kind, sorry, I'm having a Biden moment. Um, I we're all having Biden moments. Yeah, it's like. I, I think he infected. I think he infected everybody's brains. I think now we have like we're Brain suffering work. from uh, anarcho Bidenism. Um, <laughs> anarcho Bidenism. Vosh, I don't unironically called himself that one time. Yep. Um, the system is designed not for you or me, and furthermore, like it's not. They don't work. They don't work for us. They don't. I'm sorry. <laughs> like right now, there's there's forces that are making decisions that a melted brain person can't make. Can't make. What's this, Fred Edward? Door references a Princeton study in 1994. We lost out democracy to the corporate billionaire class. Yeah, yeah, that, exactly. that, is, that is another one. Yeah, that, there, there was a Princeton study that um, <clears throat> that is peer reviewed. There's people that don't like science. Um, that uh, basically proves that we don't live in a traditional democracy, or what, we, what you would call a democracy. It's, it's much more like an oligarchy. Yeah. So, like this whole like this whole crazed liberal progressive framing that even a lot of people on the far left are falling for, where it's like, well, we can't let Trump get in, or we're gonna lose our democracy, motherfucker. You already lost it a while ago. You don't have one now. You're just going to have a mean guy. And let's not forget that, like, <clears throat> nothing fundamentally changed under Trump either because he wasn't the boss either. He didn't build his – he didn't build his fucking wall. Um, he didn't drain the swamp. He he brought in swamp creatures. He became the swamp. He didn't fuck – he, he didn't wreck the deep state. He worked with the deep state. Nothing ever fundamentally changes. 